Uh, good afternoon. Thank you, everybody, for coming here on a nice warm day. Uh, I'm joined here by uh, DOA Director Jonathan Woman, along with OMB Director Brian Daniels. And we want to take the opportunity to update Rhode Islanders on the status of the Cranston Street Armory project. Today, we are releasing the independent financial review of the proposal to develop the armory. Our administration requested this outside review as part of our due diligence process to determine if the proposal is financially feasible and in the best interest of the Rhode Island taxpayers. Our team has reviewed this report. It became clear uh, that uh, the proposal put too much risk on Rhode Island taxpayers and not enough on other sources. Uh, before Director Brian Daniels and, 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 and uh, Director Woma take your questions, um, I want to highlight some of the concerns that the independent reviewer identified in their report. First, under the proposal, the state and taxpayers would lose a minimum of $10.5 million on their investment. Second, the state and taxpayers would bear 100% of the financial risk of any construction or operating cost overruns. And third, while the state is being asked to invest at a minimum of $60.9 million in taxpayer funds to make the project viable, the developer is investing zero dollars in the project, which I was never comfortable with. The financial review concluded that this is not in the best financial interest of the state or its taxpayers. Further complicating the development is the fact that the Armory property currently has two owners. The City of Providence owns the parking lot and the adjacent park, and the state uh, owns the Armory building. Said simply, the current proposal of the Cranston Street Armory is not a good deal for the state by taxpayers, and ultimately the state needs to make decisions based on what's best for Rhode Island taxpayers statewide. Redeveloping is an important project for the Providence community. This project has the possibility of invigorating the neighborhood and bring much needed economic stimulus to the West End community. And we stand to continue to work uh, with Providence uh, to make good things happen for their community. And the state, just like we are with other important projects, should help support this effort. After seeing all the information, we've come to the conclusion that this is a local community project, not a state project. Which is why we brought, we've begun high-level conversations with Mayor Smiley and his team about the possibility of transferring the ownership of the building to the city. And I'm pleased the mayor and his team have shown initial interest. The goal is to come up with a mutually beneficial strategy to develop the armory in a way that protects taxpayers statewide while enriching the local economy and West End community. These discussions are ongoing, and we're also open to exploring other options as well. With that, we'll take questions. So we're going to get to everyone's questions in an orderly fashion, and Alexandra will start with you first. Um, so Governor, you've been on record saying that this was not a good deal for taxpayers before in our reporting. At what point did you decide that it was a bad deal for taxpayers? And did you decide that before, seemingly you decided that before the report came out? So there were many things about the proposal that I instinctively uh, felt as though needed to have uh, verified, and that's the reason that we, we employed and got the report done uh, to show, you know, to actually uh, seek out whether or not, in fact, the way, what I was seeing was accurate. The, p the position that is very clear to me is that this is a community project. This is not a statewide project. And the risks that uh, the state taxpayers would incur which is significantly tens of millions of dollars and risk of any overruns on the cost of the project, as well as cost in terms of the overall um, uh, operations, the risk is just too high for the state. 
But the city, uh, you know, as a community project and a former mayor, this really potentially fits right in with what would make sense for them. Kathy, then Steve. Okay. A couple of questions of what you've said. Number one, I assume if the city was going to take ownership, they would need state money to be able to develop it. So isn't that the same thing? Um, what is gained by simply saying, okay, you own it now, we don't, but here's our money. Well, first of all, we, that's, part of the, that's part of the conversations that we're having with the city of Providence in terms of, you know, what the what the state would involve would be in the in the in the uh, in a transfer of the property. Very important point is that you have two owners of this property. You have the state that owns the building, and you have the city that owns the parking lot and the park. Um, my experience in in real estate development is that you should have one owner. Uh, so that's what we're working with with the city right now to determine whether that's a possibility in their minds, and uh, and also what it, what it would entail from the state uh, potentially to you know have some level of involvement. But the distinction is the risk, right? The risk is infinite relative to. Uh, the way that construction costs could go, the state takes back, you know, the taxpayers would bear the brunt of that, and also operations. So, for the state taxpayers, moving into the to the city uh, will actually, you know, will cap that that risk uh, at whatever level we potentially negotiate with the city. And in fact, that happens, and um, that's what we're in the process of. Last well, one, and then Steve, and then we're so pro, right? Yeah, no, I understand. Um, but to ask the questions we were asking directors earlier today. Um, if I understand this correctly, there are really two options. One is, Scout's contract says thou, they shall be the master developer, and you and you renegotiate with them. The climate has changed, you want some different things, maybe offices aren't the big thing now, maybe it's housing. So that's one option. Instead, it sounds like we're going back to square one, you're going to, some, somebody's going to come up with a new RFP, whether it's the state or the city, then they bring in proposals, then they start vetting people, then they bring in JLL. So what this does is it seems to stop it dead in its tracks. So the question, after observing that, is if I got it right, that it stops it dead in its tracks and the whole thing starts from, from the beginning again, and if that's so, why not just renegotiate uh, the terms with Scout? I'm going to make this as clear as I can. It's a community project, not a state project. The state taxpayer should not take the risk that's involved the way it's currently presented. My opinion is that it's a citywide project, and we're going to do our best to uh, empower the city uh, with potentially a transfer of ownership to make that happen. So there's a big difference between what you said and what you know what, what your what your analysis is. No, this keeps the project going. We want to keep this project going. We want the state wants to make sure that it, that something happens there that's positive. Uh, that'll be uh, you know in the discussions with the mayor, and in fact, we're able to make some sort of agreement on a transfer of the property. This keeps it going. This doesn't stop it. If you, for what you're what you're suggesting is that we continue to force a statewide project on this issue. It's not a statewide project, and the taxpayer should not bear the cost of a local project that is good for the local community and not necessarily good for all the taxpayers in the state right now. Two part question. Yep. Earlier, one of your directors, forgive me, I can't remember which, referenced there was $80 million in funding for community centers. Is that the state funds? So, so is the state going to take in $80 million to uh, do right. what? Yeah, we're well, looking right into that, but that's, again, that's an out of a learned 365 plan that does money that's been approved in the state budget to use federal money to create learning centers around the state of Rhode Island. Brian might be able to talk about here. Is a learning center there? So it, it's a good question, and I think it gets to the governor's point in that uh, Providence, because um, Providence and the community need to determine what they want the project to look like. There may be components of the SCOUT proposal that are worth proceeding, but one thing that's changed in the last few years is there's a stronger focus on housing. There's a substantial uh, new funding sources for housing, so that may be in the mix. When it comes to the, um, the community purpose, there's $81 million in federal, that is the American Rescue Plan Act uh, uh, 
It is a capital projects fund, so Providence's allocation of that is about $16 million, and, and that's matching. So Providence, if they chose to and wanted to do um, uh, out-of-school learning and job development and, and health uh, screening, they and, and do a multi-purpose community center, that is a funding source that they could tap for that project. Their, their part will be limited to $16 million of what you say is $81 million. Well, so that, that's just based on the Yeah, I mean, the, again, that's an option of the, we're going to follow the lead in the conversation with the mayor, and they're going to set up what they want to have to happen there. If, it, if there's ways that there's buckets of funds that we have that are already appropriated to certain things, well, like Brian said, housing or education, uh, and, they, and they chose to have that in their, you know, in their domain in, in terms of what they want to do, that's fine. We're not going to uh, insist that any of this is done. We're just using that as examples where we can provide support. And the second part yes. that I wanted to ask was, from your lips, did this have anything to do with the two former directors, now the woman employed by the state, and their ill-fated visit with Scout in the spring? You no, know, absolutely not. Brian? Well, Governor, I was going to say, it was just based purely on the financials. You seem skeptical from the start. This idea was not hatched under your administration. Then, as Steve mentioned, this project came to overriding for other reasons. Were there other factors at play, or in your mind, was this purely financial? It's purely what's in the best interest of the, of the people in the state of Rhode Island in terms of how we invest taxpayer dollars. The risk is too high. Right? So when you talk about the construction cost uh, and not understanding exactly where it would be, but the state would bear the entire risk on the construction cost, whether right now it's talking about 55 million, it could be 50% more, it could be 100% more, we don't know. And then to, in terms of the operational cost of the proposal, again, that's totally on the state uh, in, in ways that uh, I don't believe that, we, that the state should take that risk, the taxpayer should take that risk. So the, the outline that I gave is the reasons that we're making the decision that we're making uh, public today is the fact that we, we want to be partners in a way that we can help something, make something happen uh, on that property. Uh, and we're in discussions with the city right now, and we're going to continue those discussions until we find whether that's an option or not. Brian, as a follow-up, and Kevin. The, the pre-development contract that you're now ending uh, calls for, as Kevin said, this scout to be the master developer, and that if you move on from them, that you can't use anybody else. Do you believe by transferring the project to the city, you now don't have to meet that burden and can escape that part of the contract? The yeah, I'll let Brian handle that, but uh, you know, we talked about that before we got out here. Look, we, 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 we believe that, that we don't, we're not uh, obligated long term on, uh, on any scenario that, uh, you know, the, you know, as we move forward right now. But so. your administration signed it, so that is confusing. Go ahead, John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, Brian, you had mentioned that the state has already made a contract with the state and it is done. Uh, it's subject to the laws and regulations of the state of Rhode Island in terms and conditions. Uh, we have to provide the, the letter for that termination uh, to maybe explain a little bit more, but um, we don't really have any more comment other than that. Has Scott responded? No. So uh, we, have, we, have a, we have a copy of the letter we'll give to all of you. I'm sorry, I'm jumping in, uh, Brian, sort of. And then, and then Kevin has a question. And said, we'll get to everyone's I'm questions. Honest, it is the same question, and I'm just trying to get at this. There is a memorandum of agreement. It does say something that even if you, if you don't go ahead, or if you do go ahead, you're looking for another developer, it's them. It's them. They're the master developer. So how do you get out of that? And just hearing there are other laws in the state of Rhode Island doesn't reconcile that. It's part that? of the contract. The contract is terminated. Yeah, and we're very comfortable with that position. Kevin. What is the position? What's the legal argument? There's a whole, in your email, in the letter we have, there's like seven subsets that give us all the legal reasoning. So we're happy to take a look and we'll, we have a copy for you. Kevin, any question? Kathy and Brian, beat me to them. All right, Alexa. Okay, sure. Um, I mean, have you spoken to anyone from Scout about your decision or even leading up to your decision about your concerns about how this is more of a city project instead of a statewide one? We've reached out, and uh, Jonathan and Brian can, can fill in the details on that, but we have reached out to Scout in advance of this announcement. Right, but no meeting on the book so far. Not the one Steve? Yeah, do you have um, the, the community around um, the Armory, they spent about six years developing this plan. 
Do you have any words to the people there who put in a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to get this to happen, and what do you tell them? Yeah, well, the, well, the point is that we're going to continue to try to make something happen there, and, and we're going to continue the conversation to make sure that we're doing everything we can to help that that part of the of the city of Providence uh, achieve a um, you know a, a use for the property that that makes sense to the city, and that's why it's a city project and not a state project. Can I ask about the city project versus state project? What is that demarcation? Because we have the Superman building, we have a soccer stadium, we have all these state projects that are also basically community projects, right? I mean, so why do we differentiate here and say we don't want cost overruns on this project, but these other projects, which are also downtown neighborhood, Cranston, um, Pawtucket, mm -hmm. they are not. I don't understand the distinction. The risk is capped. I'm sorry? The risk is capped. In what? In, uh, we, we've made a commitment on those two projects to invest a certain amount of dollars, mm -hmm. but remember that the overriding majority of the investment is being made uh, through private funding. Alexa, you get the last question. Right. I've heard earlier this morning and through you that you might be exploring some housing development possibly in the armory, but has the administration actually looked at what it would cost to have a project at the armory that includes housing or is entirely housing? I can imagine it would be a lot more expensive than what is proposed right now. Well, we're open to all options, but the, the, right now we're, we're committed to finalize conversations with the City of Providence before we move forward in any other direction. How would you characterize your talks with the mayor about having the city assume the ownership of the property? Um, what's that been like and how far along are you? Yeah, I'll let the mayor speak on that, but we've had conversations and, and they talking, continue. Right? They're, they're positive. There's positive. There's interest. Uh, where, where we end up, um, you know, time will tell, but uh, there's, there's interest. And, and, and the mayor, I, I'll, I'll say that the mayor sees this as, a, as an important project for the city. And, and if I was sitting in his seat, I, I'd feel the same way. Thank you, Governor. Yeah. Jump on. Yes. Thank you. those conversations have been going on? Yeah. How long those conversations have been going on with the mayor? How long have you been talking with the city? Probably three weeks or so. Thank you, everybody, for coming today. Governor, so was your decision, you were trying to move off the project before the scout, before the JLL report came out then? Or did you know what was in it? Brian asked the question again. So, if you had been talking to the city for three weeks to transfer the property, the JLL financial report was just released today. So was the decision, did you already make the decision beforehand that the state was going to move off this before you had the numbers from JLL, or did you basically have the numbers? Yeah, we've had those. You know, we've had drafts you know, that we weren't making. Uh, you know, as final, final, final reports for a few days, a few weeks, and anyway. If a scout sues on this, will, do you expect the attorney general will be defending the state, or will that be a private attorney? It's a question for him. Thanks, guys. Yes. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you.